Hello, and welcome to Magic is Real, a podcast focused on the fascinating world of near-death experiences, spirit communication, and all things metaphysical and spiritual. The mission of this project is to share messages of hope and inspiration with others, and to spread the word that death is only an illusion. Thank you for being here with an open heart and mind. I wish you peace, light, and love always. Yes. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being here on Magic is Real today. I'm Shannon Torrance. I'm your host. I am a medium. I am interested in all things metaphysical and spiritual, spiritual journeys. And today I am extremely enthusiastic about bringing to you today the lovely Sylvia Isaacson, who has a podcast that is very successful that I love, and it's just self-titled, but you do a lot of interviews with um, near-death experiencers. That's not all you do. I'll have you talk more about it. There are so many topics that you cover. You offer such great wisdom. You are also the author of Channeled Messages, which are called Downloads what is it? Downloads from heaven. Yeah, that's Uh, right. I got it. it. I just doubted myself for a second. Downloads from heaven. And I am a fan of yours and I want to know all about you. So welcome. And thank you so much for showing up today. It means the world. Thank you so much, Shannon, for having me. I'm so excited to be here too. I've looked over your channel and I absolutely love it. And I hope that a lot of people listening from my channel will come and visit you because you have a lot to offer. And yeah, we as do you. And I've been talking <laughs> about this. Thank you so much for those kind words. Mm-hmm. I've been saying recently when I started this podcast, I was like, who am I though? Who's going to listen when there's Sylvia Isaacson and Jeff Mara and all these other fantastic podcasts and um, people know who these people are. And I said, but I feel called to do it. And I know that I will bring my own uniqueness to it. And that's, what we all do. We all have some, our own gifts and that's, what's beautiful. So I would love to start by getting to know about you and what led you into this on this path. I'd love to know about your background, anything you're comfortable sharing from when you were a child on up. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So um, I'm really excited. And I like your tagline magic because to me, life is magical. And that really uh, attracted me to come in. What is this? Here? <laughs> that attracted me to come and talk to you. Okay. So I started my channel because um, I had a couple of businesses and they were successful businesses. I enjoyed it. They ran their course and there was something nagging at me that I was ignoring. And I knew that deep inside there was a spiritual pull and a spiritual calling So, but I kept ignoring it because I thought, well, you know, I really, I have to do life. You know, I have to raise children. I have to do my business. I have to, a lot of things to do. And until one day I decided I just couldn't ignore it anymore. And I had a big, you know, a big cry about it. And I was really feeling like I was ignoring the most important thing about me and my life and what I could really offer to people. So then when I started my channel, I actually started it in 216, but didn't even go on to until I think, I think it was 20, uh, no, 2019 I started. So there was three years where I didn't, because I went through what everybody goes through, just like what you were talking about. And then I decided I can't, I can't hold that. So the whole thing that started me was that Trisha Barker, she's a near-death experiencer. She needed some help with the technical parts of the, um, you know, those, you know, how you were talking about ions. Well, we had something like it online. And so I set up the whole background for her and we did it together. It was a lot of fun. I got to meet all the NDEs. And of course I love NDEs just like everybody else loves NDEs. And I set it up and she said, well, why don't you come and speak on it? And I thought, well, well, I haven't had an NDE. (laughs) She goes, but I think that what you do have is qualifies for uh, you to come on. I was like, okay. And at the time I was a little bit more reserved about sharing. So basically I've been dreaming about my dead relatives for a very long time, ever since I was a kid. But I've also downloaded insights from Jesus, from God, from, I've, I've just been incredibly fortunate to be a vehicle where 
I'm open uh, or a medium, I guess you could say, yeah. <laughs> open to the messages and receptive. So just like everybody else, I have my ups and downs in life, but instead of deep diving into my sorrow, I deep dive into opening myself up to the possibilities. And I ask questions through my meditation and through my prayer. And I'll say, and I like to say more like meditation because I'm not like, I don't really have a, a specific type of way to pray. I just talk to God. <laughs> yeah. And so um, I started talking to God and then that's when on top of the dreams, I was getting downloads straight up and they have been magnificent. I even had a dream last night. Yes. How, um, how, well, okay. First, my question <laughs> is when you received the downloads and when you began to receive them, how did you know they were from spirit? Oh, well, the very first one I got was from my grandpa and my grandpa had died um, before I was even born. So, and I didn't know him. And so he came to me and um, you see, I didn't really realize what was going on until later because I was only eight years old. So my grandpa came and he said, Sylvia, I'm your grandpa. And I want to tell you that I love you. And his mouth wasn't moving and he was speaking Italian. And at the time I didn't know Italian. I hadn't learned the language yet. My parents were speaking English because they were here and he was from Italy anyways. So he said, I want you to know that I'm sorry that I didn't get to know you on earth, but that I love you very much and that I'm here for you and that your life is going to be great. Don't worry about it. Everything's going to be really good. And he kind of made me feel like he really loved me and cherished me. And then he said to me, and tell your mom that your brother is okay. He's with me. And I was like, brother, I don't have a brother. I don't have a brother. Like, And I found out that after me there was a baby that died in uh, as an infant and so um, when I told my mom this she was actually really receptive to it because she also liked my grandpa it was my paternal grandpa and um, she said oh my gosh you you talked to your grandpa I was like I did and she said yeah and so now I know the telltale signs and they are that his mouth wasn't moving he was speaking to me telepathically I saw him when he was young and my grandpa died older, but he was young when I saw him. So that was my very first kickoff dream. <clears throat> and then I had many more. The one that was quite significant to me was when I was, uh, well, they were all, all of them. But when I was 19, um, I had my son at the time and I was pretty young and I was really worried about it because everybody was, you know, saying, oh, you're too young. You can't do this. And so then um, a woman came to me and she said, Sylvia, um, everything's going to be okay. And she said, I, I want to show you your son. And she showed me a whole video clip of his life from zero to three years old, him in a crib, his first tooth, everything. And she said, everything's going to be all right. Don't you worry. And then she pointed to far away and she said, and that baby may be. And then I saw a smaller baby that was fair. And I have two children. So um, that was really stunning to me, first of all, because I didn't know I was pregnant. And secondly, <laughs> like uh, during that time, uh, where was it? Hold on a second. So I was 19. Yeah, it was right around the time either I had just found out or I didn't quite know. I wasn't, you know what it was. I hadn't gone to the doctor to take the test yet, but I suspected. And it was right at that time. So that was really a big deal of a dream for me. And then, I mean, I feel like I'm in the spirit world all the time. Uh, to me, there's no difference between this world and then when I go to sleep into the other world. Like I'll sit at a banquet table with all my relatives and we all eat and um, yeah. That's <laughs> so beautiful. Clearly, yeah. you, I mean, as we all know that we all have these capabilities. Some are stronger than others. If you don't believe in it, then you're not going to see it. But mm -hmm. some people are so much more sensitive. And for whatever reason, they're able to do this. Do you have any knowledge of anyone else in your family who had these abilities? Yeah, my mom did. Um, but I, I was raised by my father and I felt very close, but my mom was actually a psychic. And um, 
it was something that when I was younger, I really didn't understand. It kind of scared me. And also I felt that it pulled her away. I already didn't have enough of her. And because she was so good at it, she had tons of people coming. She had, you know, a classroom full of people coming. And um, I remember her taking me once to a spiritualist church and I picked up a book on Edgar Casey, and I thought, this is really cool. I like Edgar Casey, So um, that was good. Um, but most recently, last night, and then in 2020, I had the most magnificent dream. So um, I had an interesting life. And during part of my life, there was somebody who, she was my catechism teacher uh, when I was living in Italy, and she taught me all about Jesus. So I didn't really know about Jesus before then, because once my family moved away to North America, we kind of lost touch with our roots and with our religion. And so I didn't really know about Jesus. So I had my own perception of who I thought Jesus was. And that was that some that he was always looking over me on and on. So but I never felt like he would actually come to me and talk to me. And so in 2020, I went to Sedona and I dragged my husband there and I said, hey, we're going to go there. I'm going to go to the vortex. I'm going to get like more spiritually charged and this is going to be great. I'm going to have some good dreams. Sure enough, we went there and it was really a great time, but it was a bit of a little bit of a letdown because I didn't feel anything special. I was like, I'm, I thought I was going to feel like the vibration of the mountain move. <laughs> And instead, it was just a spectacular feeling, but it was really a nice hike. And then I went to bed that night and we were all kind of laughing because we went with another couple. And um, then I fell asleep and boom, Jesus was there. I was like, mind blown. I said, Jesus, aren't you too busy? <laughs> That's crazy. to come and see me. Yeah. I, I said, you must be like, you know, you need to go to um, and I'm, I'm missing like about a thousand dreams that are in my book downloads from heaven, which I'll probably put back up, but I, I just want to share something. Things have changed so rapidly since the dream of Jesus that I almost didn't want to put it up. So let me share. He came up to me and he was about, I don't know, just, um, an arm's length away and started telling me so many things that were completely mind blowing and he didn't talk to me like in a religious way. He just said, hi, Sylvia. And then I, I'm like, hi. And that's when I said, are you too busy? And then he said this, he put his hand here and then his hand forward into my heart. And he said, the kingdom is within. And this is a bit controversial. And I said, do you mean the kingdom of God is within? And then he repeated the kingdom is within. I was like, okay, I'm going to listen to Jesus. He had a white robe on with red and blue piping. And I was like, I'm just, I can't even believe you're here. I'm just going to listen to you a hundred percent. And then he said, you are not your life. He said, you are experiencing your life. And he brought up a ruler and on the ruler were dots. And he said, each one of these dots is an experience that has a beginning and an end. And he said, you are alpha and omega. You have no beginning and you have no end. He said, you are eternal. You must know that kind of thing. He said it like that. I was like, okay. So I was like, so what does that mean? He said, exactly what I said is that this is an experience. So that's different than your life and who you are. So I was like, okay, I was wrapping my head around. It took me two years to fully figure it out. And I'll give you the translation of it. So then he said, I want you to look in the mirror. So I was looking for a mirror everywhere and I couldn't see a mirror. All I could see was the universe. And then he said, what do you see? I said, I just see the universe, the planets and the stars. And he said, that's you. And I said, I'm that big. I was so naive in my response as I've said, I'm that big. He said, that is you. And he made it clear to me that the universe was a reflection of who I was and that everything I saw was a reflection of the creation from within. So I was made by God and imbued with the creative energy and power. And every time I looked out, into the universe, I can see my creation. And I was like, okay, 
<laughs> this is a lot. That's heavy. So, yeah, it changed my entire perspective. It changed like, you know, I was interested in, and no offense to anybody who is, but interested in past lives, this, that, and the other. Now I'm just like, wow, I have to learn how to be the best creator I can. And every interaction I have with every single person now is a fresh and new interaction where they are a reflection of me. They're a reflection of everything um, within me, all aspects, all my love, all my fear, and all those things. So now I spend my days uh, trying to help people understand that their circumstances, the people around them are um, of their creation and how you can empower yourself by understanding your identity so that you can create and recreate and understand. Because if you have that, you know, if you have that understanding, you don't feel upset and you're not worried and you don't have fear. So that's my goal now. Thank you for sharing that. And I love that message. It's what I'm learning too. And it, it, Jesus, I believe Jesus because what he told you, because I'm starting to see that for myself, not saying I dismiss anybody else's belief system, but it really resonates. And I see it more and more that way. The more I see it that way, the more everything checks out. Yeah. Uh, and I know I'm being a little vague, but it's like, I start to see the, the reflection aspect and the connections I have with people and how it's all one thing and how there's no time. And it is so empowering, not from a, I'm more powerful than anyone else standpoint. It's, we are all infinitely powerful. Hopefully we use that power for good and for love, but it really does take such a weight off, especially when things get hard, which is all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, do you, what do you know about that, about why, how these difficult things that happen in the world uh, help us, I guess I'll say, for lack of a better term? Well, like Jesus said in my dream, these are experiences. So these are of our choice. And that's the hardest thing to wrap our mind around is that we're actually deliberately um, creating the problems. So in and of themselves like for example if everybody stopped doing everything there'd be no problems yeah just at all like if we all just decided to take a chill day and, and not do anything there really wouldn't be any problems so it's really our actions our intentions our thoughts our fears the the sort of frenzy that happens around it and i think it's very dramatic and again i want to make sure i'm clear that it took me a long time to get to the path where i'm at and, you know, I did a lot of different studying and investigating prior to, like, as I was in my 20s and in my 30s, I did read and tried to understand all those things. So I don't knock anybody on their journey, wherever they're at. But at this point in time, like you and I are connected for the exact same reason, because we're at the exact same spot, because we are, um, it's a synchronistic reflection of you I am you and you are me and it's to my benefit and uh my benefit solely and advantage I guess if you want to say that you are well and you are whole because when you are well and you are whole that is a clear sign to me that I have integrated all aspects of myself in a healthy and loving way very well said that's really really beautiful how with that being said, um, there was a little glitch, but it's, it's good now. With that being said, since we do experience what we project, how are some ways that we can change the course of our lives or some of the events that happen in our lives? Mm -hmm. so I'd love to hear about free will, partly, but also about, they may be two different things in your mind. So however you, however you interpret that, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. How can we change those things? Okay, so I will try to understand um, what you said, and you can you can interject anytime. So what I'm hearing you say is, how could we change the bad things that are happening in our lives? Like, what could we do? Yeah. Well, first and foremost, if you look outside, I'm in nature. Like, I've literally relocated into nature. We can't necessarily all do that, but I'm on six acres of land with animals and deer that roam around because the earth, for me, is a very grounding place. And if you can't live on it you can go to parks and you can spend time that's the number one thing because nature will recalibrate your energy so that you can be yourself 
number one. And then number two, we need to do what I like to call the inner work. And the inner work is understanding that, um, you know, we all have ideas, analysis, and judgment of the outside world, not just people, but everything about the outside world um, in every avenue of life. So when we have that kind of, um, let's, let's call it judgment for the sake of judgment without having a whole religious undertone to it. When you have that judgment, you have separation. And that was about the dream I had last night. So, okay, this is such a good segue to talk about. I'm, yeah, I was going to ask you if you want to share it because it, I, I can yeah, tell because it's a good one. Will, this will help with the, with the, how do we fix it kind of thing. Okay. So I had a dream and this time it was God directly, the source directly talking to me. So I always pay very close attention when God is speaking to me and Jesus, of course. So he said, Sylvia, because I just had a new member of our family. My daughter had a daughter. So I'm a nana Congratulations. Now. Thank you. Hot and grandma. I'm, <laughs> thank you I had my kids yeah but anyways so he he helped me to understand he she whatever you want to identify the source that I, I tend to say he but anyways um he wanted me to understand that to not that okay when we call somebody a name just by the nature of us calling someone a name they are separating from us instead say of my own like you are of my own if I talked to you and said Shannon um you are of my own you are mine you know what I mean you're my friend you're my you are my reflection then you automatically feel loved but if I say oh you're Shannon on your different channel on your different thing and if I if I isolate you I isolate myself and so the the more we judge, the more we're isolating the other person into that category or this category. So the problem is, is when we are separate, we feel weaker and we feel less capable. And that's when the competitive mind comes in, the sort of the, the monkey mind, I guess you could call it. And then we start thinking, well, maybe they are better. They have that better. They are, you know, they got this or I don't. And so, but in fact... It's almost ridiculous because you are me and I am you and you're one aspect of myself. I should absolutely be cherishing you and everyone else that I come into contact with. Because again, like I stated, the problem comes when you separate it. You're on that team. I'm on this team. You're this, you're that. So then you start to think, well, I don't like that or I do like this. And then when you like something so much and you're trying to pull it towards you, there's energies <laughs> that work against that so long story short inner work identify who you are and you are made in God's image this is nothing new I'm not I mean we all know this so we're made in God's image which means that we also have the power to create and we also have the free will to create and when we create and then when we label people with names and identities that are separate from us we're alienating a part of ourselves so that we feel fragmented and alone and we're more prone to hurt those people uh inadvertently mostly but sometimes um you know deliberately we do things um you know spiteful things as human beings in general and that's because we don't understand our true nature we would never do that if we truly knew and let's get back to the positive part. So if I speak to you or anybody, my new family member, or like you or me, like instead of saying their name, oh, I have expectation. You are this and you're going to be that. No, you're just mine. That's I just love you. Idea. That is so beautiful. That's why we say namaste in yoga, which is, I may be interpreting it, but it's in not the words correctly, but it's the divine in me. She's the divine in you. We're all yeah. one. And that's what we are all one means. I yeah. am you, you are me. We, we all are part of the same energy. Mm -hmm. And I feel pretty excited to have this sort of fresh outlook because I don't really see a lot of people talking about, uh, and there may be, I just haven't run into them um, to the depth that I'm receiving of how much we are one and how um, our eyes, what we see outside of our eyes is just 
the making of our creation there's a lot of people including me that used to want to manifest like i'd be like oh manifest oh yeah let's try manifest abundance and let's try the reality is is that we are excellent manifestors we have a ton of abundance we just don't recognize it's ours which reminds me of a dream i had so i had this dream where i went to this cave and there was an angel outside and an angel inside and the angel inside said come in i'm like are you sure should i go there i could see there was a lot of gold and gems and and she said yeah come on in and then the other angel stood guard at the cave door and i'm like okay so and then the angel said this is all yours and I said, what? You know, just like when Jesus was in front of me, I was shocked. I was like, well, I said, honestly, I don't think I've done enough to receive all of this. And the angel said, yes, God wants you to have all of it. It's all yours forever and ever. It's never going, the status will never change and we'll always be here for you when you need it. So basically what that was saying is that we are eternally abundant and that we can create a multitude of anything that you can imagine the question is what are we choosing to create and that's a long way around to the answer so whatever is within us within our mind and within our creative power because we have separated ourselves from our true identity we're now creating boogeymen and <laughs> you know we're creating uh, problems that don't exist in reality yes and it's i'm finding that more and more and yet I still find myself constantly up against, I know this has to be a block, but what, how do I get it out of there? Besides writing affirmations and meditating it away, or, you know, not away, but reframing and rethinking and constantly, you should see me. I walk through my apartment like, I am abundant. I, I try to psych myself up and bring my energy up just to get myself in the zone. But obviously that's not all. It, it can't just be that. Um, and so there is like, how do we find out, how, what are some of the ways we can find out what's blocking us from that, walking through the door to that cave? Okay, so really great question. And the reason I'm here um, on your podcast is because I know that you're a genuine and sincere person. And I can tell that through your energy and we have the, the right and um, the honor to do that anytime we want to we can read right to a person's intention and heart and I feel so honored to be able to open myself up to that so saying that I'm just going to tell you and it's so simple that it may kind of just go right over so I would if I told you that everything you see in the entire world and universe is of your creation that should be a very empowering statement and if you are uh, walking around your apartment saying I am abundant I am abundant with love I'm telling you yeah. this with love it's almost like you are already in the cave you are already manifesting you are but um, where the focus is is on the lack the focus is on the depravity, um, uh, not you, but all yeah. of us, on the depravity. And the reason why is because there's so much discussion about it. Um, there's so many facets of our being that is saying the same thing about everything, the economy, our lives, our structure. Mm -hmm. If you look at the conversation around, it's almost like a, um, I want to use a word that won't offend anybody. It's almost like an obsessive compulsive which reminds me of another download I had. So um, so the obsessive compulsive idea that we are not enough, don't have enough, aren't going to get enough, are going to run out. If we are eternal, that's not even possible. It, on the scope of reality, it's not a possibility. It's only a possibility when our minds um, become not well. So I had um, a vision and this one also was a God one. And I was um, really upset about something and I was crying about it. And God spoke to me and he said, you know, Sylvia, I know that you've been looking for me and you wonder if I really exist. And I'm going to tell you that you will find me in the beating up hearts of all living things. I said, oh, I don't know if that's good because I don't know if I love everyone like <laughs> at the time at the time and so then he also went on to say Sylvia the biggest problem on earth because you're asking about problems is compulsion and I said really God that's the biggest problem like he said yes I made the earth blue and green as a healing place as the earth is involved and instrumental 
um, it of course it's a dimension. We all think that it's a hard 3D uh, for whatever they call it, but every dimension seems as real as this dimension does. So, so we're on this dimension thinking that it's super solid because that's our perception of it, but it's actually a dimension where we are all come to learn basically the same. Uh, an aspect of ourselves needs healing. So we're healing from compulsion and the compulsion is to continually think and to forget. We're forgetting who we are and we are the children of God co-creators and creators actually let's take it right from co-creator to creator and imagine if you knew if you actually knew this and that's where faith comes in and belief and i'm not talking about religious faith i'm talking about actually understanding who your creator is then you're like i got way better things to do than to worry about you be running around the earth and just having a great time and really enjoying yourself with creative experiences and i do believe we will get there but right now we're fixated on um, getting holding not losing and being better than it's actually we don't actually feel less than we're obsessed with being better than that's so good. I just in my mind as I was listening was like, that's the clip I'm going to use when I post about this later. <laughs> that was so perfect. I didn't want to interrupt. Um, I, I love that. And it, it just I, I, it makes me feel so inspired and so hopeful and, ex and excited, which is again, why I call this magic is real, because it's like I finally figured out the formula for peace and happiness. It does not mean I don't have anxiety, it does not mean that I don't feel sad when it's appropriate. But now I have this way of being able to reframe things that helps. It doesn't mean I don't still feel the feelings because I'm a human being. It doesn't mean I'm perfect. It doesn't mean I make the perfect choices all the time. It doesn't mean I'm, I'm not still healing from old stuff. But what it does mean is this is my playground. I can experience, I can choose how to experience this. And I was just telling someone today, like I go through the world now with just this ease. And I was somebody who was painfully shy, selective mute as a kid, had to be in therapy at age two because I was so terrified of the world and could barely, I couldn't speak. I was so terrified. And so I think that's why, especially having denied myself that connection as a child by shutting myself off from the world, now I go through it wanting to connect with everybody. And I was saying today, I went to the super dealer today to get something fixed on my car. And mm -hmm. I walked in and I said, the two guys that worked there said, California, because I just moved here from LA to Virginia. And they're like, hey, California. And I went, they, I said to my friend, I go, you know, they remember me because I said, I'm in Virginia. And I think most people are just kind of going about their lives and they walk mm -hmm. in, can you help me? I said, but I just kind of go through and I'm like, what's your name? What's going on? Like, tell me about yourself. And it's, it's not because I'm trying to do anything. It's just that I'm so enjoy just, I love to connect with people and I want to know all about them. And so um, I think that that knowledge that you just reinforced and validated is really exciting. And it might be easier said than done. Yeah. Well, in, in my mind, you're perfect. Like, yep. the, you know what? So I'm seeing you. And so this is where perception comes in, right? So I'm seeing you as perfect. Um, we're not complimenting nothing. Just when I see you, you seem perfect. Yeah. And so I'm having a perfect conversation. If I needed help, I would reach out to you and I would say, hey, can you help me? Because you're my soul sister and you're a part of me and I see you as whole and God sees us as whole. And when we start seeing ourselves as whole and understanding that you know, your childhood, my childhood, someone else's, that's part of our experience, but that's not who we are. Yeah. And that's what Jesus was saying about the ruler. He said, you are not your life. This is an experience. And then the next question um, that people would probably ask is, well, why would we have this experience? And, you know, that, that I don't know, but, and I'm, I'm not even judging it. There's something about this experience that's helping us to become uh, better and to understand who we are so that we can um, look at ourselves. So I don't see us as like, oh, you know, we were broken and now we have to get fixed and things. I see ourselves as, oh, we chose that experience. How interesting is that? 
And like, how many people choose that experience? Okay, so like a third of the population? Hmm. So I wonder what's in it. What's in it for me to learn and to understand? You know, well, why did I choose to have that kind of relationship with my mom? I really, you know, and now as I go down the line and I'm the matriarch of the family, I realize something I totally learned about motherhood through having that what in the world would be called dysfunctional um, relationship to now that wasn't dysfunctional. It was a fantastic way to learn. It was painful. Mm -hmm. But it was a fantastic way to learn how to honor the motherhood in, in just in in everything. And especially at this stage in my family and in myself. But you see, I'm that for everybody. I'm that for you. I'm that mm -hmm. for like whoever I am at the moment and within everything that is me, I am that for you. So it's to my benefit and your benefit that I become the best I can be because I'm a more valuable uh, love resource for you. Absolutely. I always said the worst things that have ever happened to me were the best things for me, yeah. that it was all part of the journey and I needed it. And I sometimes say, oh, if only I had known this when I was 25, I could have saved myself so much heartache and pain and wasted time. And then I always correct myself and say, it wasn't wasted. I wouldn't be here today where I am had I not had all those years of struggle, internal turmoil, <clears throat> you know, lack of self-esteem, lack of self-love, I needed that. Mm -hmm. Even though it was painful and I almost didn't survive it, it's what now makes me so grateful because it led me to this place. And yeah. and who else, and, and I'm sure there are also a lot of uh, soul reasons, um, soul evolution reasons too, uh, in, in addition to my human growing, expanding, and constantly learning and constantly excited to see what's next so since you invited me I feel at liberty to say your soul is whole you're fine and uh, I mean you're choosing a very interesting experience yeah. that includes all of those aspects that you mentioned earlier uh, and so you know when I talk to people about that regular people who don't really dive into spirituality they get very upset yeah. yes, <laughs> because yeah. they are very attached to, I'm just going to readjust myself. They get very attached to um, the identity of not well. That's why I just watched an NDE the other day and she said something really cool. She said, oh, I had to go into this space to decompress because I had believed that I was so sick that even on the other side, I was still sick and they had to help me to um, change my mind state because my I had immersed myself so much in the experience that I thought it was my actual identity. And so we, we actually start believing that we are those things. And that's again, why Jesus came and said, that's not the truth. You are not your experiences. You are Alpha and Omega. You are eternal. You don't have to worry. I start saying, I am never going to die. That's a long time. Yeah. I better like start making some better stories and creating <laughs> yeah. some, you know, because like, and now I feel like things are pretty fantastic. And I'm very mindful of not thinking and um, creating bad stuff because I don't want it. I don't want it. So don't think it. I don't want it. So don't obsess about it. Because remember, just like on the other side, see, there is no other side. I refer to the other side, but what yeah. we think is the other side, what we think becomes reality. So as soon as you shift into different dimensions, uh, whatever you're thinking, and it happens just at the same speed. I used to think that it happens slower here on earth, but not so. It happens, but the experience is slowed down because we're kind of, it's kind of like a slow motion movie, you know, and we're analyzing every bit of it. And the pain is actually there as a, um, it, you know, like, a, what do you call those sort of bars on either side of you to protect you? Like you've gone too far this way, you've gone too far that way. And pain is there. But instead, we look at pain as the most dramatic thing that ever happened in the entire universe and that we want to fall on the ground and melt away from it. I was, I feel like this is one of those synchronous synchronicities where Brooke Grove and I have been talking about a lot of this stuff Trisha and I have been talking about a lot of this stuff and what I gleaned from, and having spoken with several of my other friends what I kept saying in the last few days and hearing back was you know do whatever 
I said, you know, I may make some choices that I know probably won't end the way that I hope they will. (laughs) I was like, they probably won't, but I'd rather go down the road and see. Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, if it doesn't work out the way I want it to, it will still have been an important lesson for me. And I've told that to my friends who said, don't judge me, but, and I said, I'm not judging you because unless you're in like some horrible immediate danger, I'm not going to judge you or tell you don't go there. Don't, I'm a big proponent of go there, see what happens, because if it feels right to you now, it may not pan out the way that you think it will, but it's still important. It's part of it. Your soul chose this. And yes, we have free will, but go see what's at the other, go see what's down that road. Mm-hmm. And then you'll only, you'll only gain more information about what's right for you in the end. You'll only go, okay, that didn't work. I'm backtracking, whatever it is. I just don't think any of it's a loss. Yeah. You know, people are like, should I do this? Should I? I'm like, it doesn't matter whichever way you go, as long as it's not harming anyone or yourself, try it. Yeah. And most recently I'm learning, um, through the downloads, but also just personally on a spiritual level that I always wanted to know, what's my life purpose? What's our life purpose? What is the purpose of being here? And that is to strengthen and empower. So what we're doing is strengthening and empowering because you see creation happens eternally. Like our creations will will continue on in different dimensions and different ways eternally. So it's important that we are evolving. And through these experiences, the objective is, is that we are evolving and becoming stronger in our spirit as creators so that we can work alongside God to uh, create. And then, you know, why would we want to waste our time doing so many, you know, of these creations? I'm not sure, like, because I don't have the answers to everything. I don't like a lot of the stuff that happens, but I try to, instead of focusing on it, because I know that focus creates, focus creates. And there's some Eastern philosophies that they say, whatever you put your attention on grows and whatever you take your attention away from withers. So if everybody today decided to take their attention off the differences and all the calamities and focus solely on um, things that were more productive, positive, fun, creative, uh, and things that brought us together, it would change in a day, in a day. Why is it so hard, Sylvia? (laughs) Well, it's it's not really hard it's just where we chose to land you know and we choose to land places because our vibration takes us there a lot of people say oh you know I incarnated here because of this or that well from my understanding is that your vibration takes you just like on earth whatever you say think or do takes you exactly where your decisions and your intentions land you in the spot that you're in right now and um, it's the same wherever we are in the universe, we land there because that was our vibration. Right. That makes so much sense. Definitely. I, yeah, I've always said it's not like other I'm superior or someone superior to me. We're just all at different levels in terms of what we're experiencing, where we're at, um, how we've grown, what kind of, uh, behavior we've chosen to engage Mm -hmm. in. And it doesn't make anyone better or worse. It just, when I say someone's on my level, it doesn't mean that I'm higher or they're lower. It just means that we're just not in the same vibrational state. We're just not meeting in the middle. Um, and I would also love to know with the ability, the abilities that you have, first of all, how often do you get these downloads? Is it like every night or is it just once a month or when something significant is happening? All the time. All the time. And now more and more because I'm less involved in the details of my life. Like I don't worry about things anymore. So now I'm just um, walking around downloading things. I look at things and suddenly it unfolds. I just want to go back to what you said for a second. Please. Um, so, and respectfully, because you are me and I am you. And I yeah. say, it with love. so um, nobody can be more than you or less because they are you. <laughs> And right. whenever you have somebody that rubs the wrong way, all it is, is uh, an aspect of yourself that you haven't integrated because together we unite as uh, creators and we are one. So if I see somebody and I think, Ooh, like that, that's not my vibe. What it is, is I reject that. 
I reject that aspect of myself. I ball it up and put it into a corner, alienate it, and do not want to be a part of it because it, I'm not ready for it. And I have the prerogative to do that. So do you. Um, but understand, that's you. Right. That's so interesting. So you can do it. You can, you can think things or say, or uh, like uh, alienate someone or uh, love someone. But when you say, okay, I love this person. I like this person. What you're saying is it's kind of like colors. Like you can't see back here because the sunlight so much, but it, there's a lot of green and you would think that everything was green, but in fact, green is the only color that is being rejected. Right. right? That's mm -hmm. why we see it. So it's, it's sort of like that when we see people oftentimes we see what we reject and that's why bad things happen because we reject them we judge them we alienate them and uh, again look there's a lot that goes down to the story because people are gonna say what about this atrocity on my channel non-stop okay, oh, i know i had to take a break <laughs> I understand. So they say the same things. They bring up this one guy that did the worst thing. Well, we balled it up and we all, like another dream I had, the source of all evil. And basically they showed me, they came and they showed me how every thought we have and every what we think is a small thing we did collects and sort of roams around. And so then we say, oh, how did what that person did that? But meantime, that aspect of yourself has absorbed all of the world's bad thoughts and they are manifesting it in that one large point rather than everybody doing it you know sometimes we have that's what the word scapegoat is for <laughs> mm -hmm. we use people as scapegoats oh, oh yeah. so interesting yeah so downloads all the time. I mean, to me, it's like now I kind of like floating through at nighttime. I go a different place, daytime and there. It's I I try not to talk to my everyday friends about it. I know I'm starting. It's funny. I think as well, I know that I'm having, you know, how you have awakenings and you have it's not just one day or one thing. It just it starts to expand the more you draw your awareness to it, as you've said. The last week has been crazy, crazy. And I'm starting to feel like, God, I, I've said to a few friends, if if I didn't know myself, I'd be like, you might need to see a psychiatrist <laughs> because I'm starting to, I mean, I'm a medium already. Um, and I, so I know what spirit feels like, but now I'm starting to feel spirit at like so, so much more. I've started to visually see things like I've seen the, like the, colors changing. Um, I got up to go to the bathroom the other night and I'm like, everything's glowing white. And I wasn't even freaked out about it. Like normally I'd be like, what, why is everything white? I was just like, yeah, it's just, I'm having a spiritual experience. Um, and it's amazing how now I'm starting to realize that a lot of thoughts aren't just thoughts. They're actual, they are downloads, not as, you know, mine don't come in my, I'm sure they come in my dreams, but now I'm starting to be able to sift through them and say, I know what I'm being told. I actually trust yeah. it now. And yeah. it's so cool. And I'm not going to go around, like I said, telling it, like we said, telling everyone or saying, yeah. well, my guides told me, cause I still don't, I know that's all that matters to me. They're speaking to me. Um, yeah. And I don't need to claim it to be true, or I know this, but it's really interesting when you start to hear the voices and you start to feel the spirit as I do right now. Um, and crazy things start to happen that we think are crazy, but I think you just kind of really helped me see too that it's almost like the cave analogy that you had or the dream that you had I feel like the door is kind of opening to the cave um it's like oh so this um you know this remote isn't really solid you know or <laughs> things that I think are real mm -hmm. aren't real and it's just it's really really cool when you get these downloads do you feel compelled to write them all down to, sh to share them or do you just internalize them and, and have them sort of speak when they need to be spoken that's why i have my channel because that's that's what that's you do why, yeah once a week i go there and then i share them with people and they always like oh where did you read that and did you read that and do you follow this but i'm like no i just live in my little place here <laughs> Don't i love your channel it. thank you yeah. um and i love your channel so I, I feel like with you, for example, you're a great example. So you're a medium and you're awakening and more and more and more. You're already awake, yeah. not even awake. You're awake and, and you're discovering 
the identity of who you are, which is creator. And you can see things and things, but a lot of people don't see those things. So they look at you and think, oh my gosh, you must be like the Holy Grail, which is Uh, fantastic, (laughs) which is fantastic. And it's great. And, you know, when you do discover that wisdom, um, people want that too but they think they're going to get it from you, which they can somewhat, somewhat, right? But nobody can motivate anyone else to the degree that they want to be motivated themselves. That's why I don't push it on anyone. Like I never think my children should, they they can think and believe whatever because they're having their own experience. But if they come to me, I'll tell them and then they'll say, you're psychic. I'm like, well, doesn't everyone see this? (laughs) Like, yes. We all have the ability to, we just have to open your mind to it and sometimes practice it, you know, and just daily I meditate and I try to sit in stillness and just listen. And sometimes I don't even know if I hear anything, but just that practice of separating yourself from the 3D and being in yourself is just beautiful. Um, Tell what, share anything you like about what you have coming up. I will put your links below. I love your YouTube channel. Really, it's one of my very favorites. It's so well done. In fact, it's one of the reasons I was like, how am I going to, you know, I'm so interested in this, but like, yeah, I was like, but look how she's doing it so perfectly. And I said, let go of perfection. Um, And then your like writings that you're doing, um, anything that you want to share? I know you share a lot on your YouTube channel, but anything else you'd like to share? Yeah. Well, I think that I'm going to be working, you know, doing my website thing like everybody does and offering things there. But right now, I would love it if they would um, come to my channel. I'm live on Saturdays at um, 10 a.m. Pacific. And um, I love it when people come and ask their questions and um, just listen along and support because when people are there, I don't know if they realize how much we love that support and how valuable it is to have our viewers communicate with us and connect with us. And every time somebody writes a comment, it still means a lot to me still. It will forever because my heart is open to growing and to loving. And yeah, so I was so excited to be on here today. Thank you. That was really nice. It was really nice that you showed up. Thank you so much. Uh, One last question for you. If there's one thing that you want people to know, what is it? (laughs) That um, spirituality means journey. And journey means experience. And by default, there's going to be evolution. And evolution is like a contraction and expansion. And to not be too hard on yourself and that everybody's going to the same place anyways. You never die. You're eternal. Be easy on yourself and love others because they are you. Thank you, Sylvia Isaacson, for being here, for being my soul sister, sight unseen. I mean, in fact, before we even met, we're, I said I still consider you my soul sister. So it means a lot Thank that you, you came. It really, it, it's a beautiful thing. And uh, I'm just going to say namaste. Namaste. And I love you and all of the viewers watching. Take care. Mm-hmm.